This is Villa View, coming up, the latest on Stuart Downing. Hello and welcome to Villa View. I'm Paul Bradley and I'm joined in our Fort Dunlop studios by Aston Villa correspondent Matt Kendrick. Hi Matt. Hello there. We're talking about Stuart Downing today. Is he going to stay or is he going to go? That's the um, £15 million pound question, I suppose, isn't it? Um, Villa, Villa have been fairly forthright in, in the stance that, that, that they've, um, they've taken at the moment. Um, it's a firm no to Liverpool's bid of £15 million pound for Downing that was submitted earlier in the week. Um, Alex McLeish, obviously the new Villa boss, has also kind of echoed that by saying he's not for sale. We don't want to sell him. He was the club's best player last season. Um, we still think he's got a lot to offer the club. He's got two years left on his current contract, so there's no need to sell him. Um, that's the situation as it stands. Um, some of the vibes that, that Stuart Downing seems to have been given out, giving out over the summer um, through himself and through his through his representatives suggests that he do, he does want to leave. Um, and that he would be receptive to a move to Anfield. So um, I still think this one's got a, got a little bit to run. So what's the next step? Would Stuart Downing maybe put in a transfer request? Or is there an amount of money that Villa may even say, OK, that's it, he can go for that amount of money? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's football, isn't it? It's, every player has his price eventually. So I think it's, it needs two things to happen, in my opinion, to if Stuart Downing is to become a Liverpool player next season. It needs... Liverpool to up their offer to a level which would be acceptable to Villa. I don't think Villa have discussed that level yet because they are reluctant, so reluctant to lose him. But if Ashley Young can leave for, for what £16 million with one year left on his contract, then a fellow England, England winger of a similar age, um, probably with a little bit more experience uh, than Young, Villa will be wanting more than £16 million, and at a guess I'd say it'd be nearer to £20 million for him. So first of all, Liverpool would have to up their offer, up their offer to an acceptable level, level, and then I think Downing would have to force the issue by handing in a transfer request. I think Villa would need to be in a position, if they were going to appease the, their own, own fans, to say, well, our hands were tied, the player wanted out, we weren't going to keep an unhappy player against his will, um, we've got top dollar for him and we're going to reinvest it in the squad. And talking of that reinvestment... What sort of players will Villa be bringing in? I suppose a goalkeeper is the biggest priority at the moment. I think first and foremost it is the goalkeeper. Um, we know that Brad Friedel um, rejected Villa's offer of a one-year deal to, to go to Tottenham instead for two years. Um, and although Brad's getting on, it's, he's kind of got big gloves to fill, if you like. Um, Shay Given has emerged as the number one number one target now for Villa. Um, Obviously, like any any Manchester City player, um, he's currently currently on big books at Eastlands. So, um, not only are Villa going to have to agree a price with Manchester City, uh, which we've been led to believe is near five million pound, um, they're also going to have to agree personal terms with Given. Uh, it's my understanding that Given is quite keen to come, uh, and equally in a similar way that Downing might have to force the issue. Um, at Villa Park, uh, given may have to do the same same at Eastlands to, to get that, that move in motion. And what about outfield players? A lot of Villa fans are desperate to hear names being linked with the club. What sort of news do you have on that at the moment? I think the main thing is that the, the current squad, um, minus a, a few players who have already left, the likes of Ashley Young you mentioned, Rhea Coker, Michael Bradley, Brad Friedel, Carl Walker, Robert Pires, I'm sure I've missed a couple, I'm not forgetting uh, Mustafa Salafu and Isaiah Osborne. The squad returned to training, to pre-season training um, for the first time at Bollymore Heath tomorrow morning. So I know McLeish is keen to, to not only watch them in training and assess what he's got, but to try and meet them individually and collectively as soon as possible to, to talk about where they are all, where they're all psychologically and, and where they see their futures at the club. Um, and there's a few players he, he's trying to get back on side before he really decides what he needs to bring in in the transfer market. I mean... Maybe it's wishful thinking, or maybe he can be the, the manager who, who unlocks Stephen Ireland, for example. Um, not just unlocks him, unlocks his potential. Uh, likewise, whether he can get Stephen Warnock back on board, whether he can get Richard Dunn and James Collins back to anything like the form that they, they showed in their first year. So I, I'm sure McLeish has got, got transfer targets in mind, um, but it, it depends on how his existing players respond to his methods of management. And let's not pretend it, it, it depends on... on whether Villa are able to bring in much money um, th through the potential sale of Downing and through the potential sale of, of any other players who they deem to be surplus to requirements. 
Okay, Matt, well, thanks for your thoughts today. And thank you for watching. We'll be back again soon with more Villaview.